uh, wat voor jou alles geeft van uh, die karrende feest. En dit was niet Pieters in de uh, karrende feest, de issue that matters to us. En I'm your host Sebastian, every Friday from, eight, from 7 o'clock till 8 o'clock. And we are here to um, just give you everyday lifestyle. And today we've got a very special guest in our, in our studio. But before I'm going to do that, uh, you can just, you know, call in on 021-762-5190 uh, or SMS to 45262. I will repeat that. You can call in to 021-762-5190. Uh, and then whatever we're going to discuss today is um, you can call in and, and speak uh, to us and you can speak to, to our you can speak to our guest and you can even just uh, say what you want to because today we're going to speak about um, 16 days of uh, activism against women and child abuse and today we've got a special guest here um, Mr. Ibi and he's going to pronounce his own name because I'm going to um, I'm going to not say it right how are you doing sir? Great, great, thank you for having me though it's spelled with an E the correct pronunciation is A-B, E-B-I, A-B, it's double, A-B-A of A-B. All right, how are you doing today? I'm great, I'm great. All right, so tell us a little bit about yourself and who you are. Um, people want to know who this, this gentleman is that is uh, with us today. Well, first I'm a Nigerian, I'm a South African citizen. I practice law at Colin Jeffries Incorporated Attorneys at Century City. And then we publish a magazine to an online magazine. We focus on women and children's rights, and we do interviews and law review. The aim is to, you know, summarize the law in the simple best terms so that people can benefit from it. Because you see, when you see lawyers with the big books and big briefcase, people are scared and they get intimidated. <laughs> so the aim is to try and bring it to the, the common man on the street in a way they can understand and get the benefit from the law. All right, so you are practicing um, criminal law? No, yes, yeah. we do criminal law, we do civil law, divorce, we do labor matters, we do we wine estate, and constitution and fundamental rights. All right. With Colin Jeffries and corporate attorneys. And besides that, you are also a, a very good writer, if I understand. I think you've written four books, if I'm not mistaken. Five. I've written five, five actually. Five fiction. books. Yeah, fiction books. books. Yes, I've only published one, The Illusion of Grandeur, which is sold at exclusive books and right. internationally online. iTunes, Google Books, uh, Grizzly, Atlas, and a little host lot of others. All right. You know, today we're going to speak about women and, and child abuse. And in your book that you, I mean, I've read, read, uh, I've read your book, um, and in that book you are speaking about, you know, especially the black South Africans, male and females, and how we are treating each other as, as counterparts in life. Um, the most important thing that I want to concentrate on is about women, and because December is going to be 16 days that we're going to um, have a woman and child abuse. And I know South Africa, we are suffering of that, not only in South Africa, but in Africa. Yeah, we, in fact, over the world, but you know, in Africa, women has been I think we're more, we abuse women more in Africa than any other part of the world. This is where they suffer the most. Wow. And that's why you see the focus of the magazine, True Legal Media, it's on women and children. Mm -hmm. The idea is like what you rightly mentioned my book, the title, The Vision of Grandeur. Why I wrote the book is because of what I see in the society. Sure. Now, men have a way of doing things which I think sometimes I don't understand. And before people get me wrong, like I was on SAFM, people talked about, they think I'm trying to talk about people excluding myself. I'm inside sure. that pool too because I'm a man. Yeah. Now, we have respect for our mothers, for our daughters, our sisters. We treat them very special. You see your eyes, you're full of admiration, all right? Now you see, you have a girlfriend or a wife, you look at her differently. That's what I don't understand. See, every woman you see out there is someone's child before she becomes anything to you. What I say to men is, if a woman doesn't listen to you, like that's what we say. We don't listen to women, but we accuse them they don't listen to us. If you think a woman is not listening to you, the way you found her, why don't you leave her like that? There's someone out there who will listen to you the way you want it. Why do you have to change someone you've met? Remember when we meet women for the first time? We say, I will do anything for you, everything for you. We, we manipulate and lie to the women. Then they give us an opportunity. Once you get in there, that's where you think they, they need to be changed. But remember, you've seen this woman first. You got attracted to her the way she is. Sure. Now, if you can't change your mother, you can't change your daughter, or change your sister or your girlfriend, why do you want to change, you know, change your girlfriend or your wife? I, that's what I don't understand. Sure. You know, but before we even go in there, um, you know, I just I've grabbed this from your Facebook okay. page, 
And this is a quote that you said, do not allow fear to stop you from what you're doing. Something that will make you what you really want to be. Procrastination is a criminal of mind. Of time. Of time. Mm. Okay, of time. Yeah. Don't let it steal your time. That's a quote by you. And you know, I when I read that, I said to myself, wow, this is actually something that I want to talk about. It's especially about time. And, so, and, and especially when we're going to talk about women. I mean, no, because a lot of women, they, they don't want to go and speak up when they get abused, um, even children and stuff like that. And you know, it's, like you say, it's a crime if you procrastinate. Procrastinating. this. So, and, and now, before we're going to even go into any of these type of things, you know, as a Nigerian coming to South Africa, um, how are you treated or how were you treated if, when you came to South Africa? See, there the are various ways in which you can look at this situation, all right? Now, not just Nigerians, all the foreigners that live in South Africa, there's a tag, first of all. The, the people from the African continent, they have a title, a name for them, a derogatory name, which you say, they say, Amakori Kori, all of those ones, right? Yeah. Now, there's a way you can look at it and smile at it, because translated to English, Amakori Kori simply means foreigner. But because it's derogatory, this is what, because of the history of South Africa, you understand, so people front against it. Now, but the, the, the bad thing about Amakorikuri is they refer to the black Africans who come to South Africa. They don't refer to the white people who come to South Africa. They're not Amakorikuri, but Amakorikuri is foreigners. Sure. It's not just Nigerians or Congolese or Kenyans or Ghanaians, you understand? Sure. So now, I, what I tell to people is, now, you, you can, Nigerians can say, but what choice do we have? Because they come in here... They have no credit facilities, you know, they're not credit worthy, no bank is going to give them loan. And then they start doing business, you understand, and that maybe some of them will do some things they are not proud of or something like that. They get into things that you'll be ashamed of when you hear that people related to you get involved into such things. Now that's one way of looking at it. Then another way is this, you look at the South African society, they are good schools, there are no strikes here. You go to school, you can, if you're serious here, you say in four years I'll get a degree, you actually get it because the teachers are there, the schools are there, and they're going to give you opportunity to learn. Sure. Now, I'm saying to the foreigners who are here, why don't you take advantage of where you are living now in South Africa to do something creative that you can even take home one day, contribute back to build your home country, wherever you come from, sure. and then you can add value to where you are here, here in South Africa, by what? Study. Okay, some people say, but I'm too old to study. All right, sure. you're too old to study. Now that's what that uh, saying comes from. Okay, you, when procrastination is a criminal of time, you sit down and you think. You say, okay, I'm 30 years old. I'm 40 years old. What am I going to do with education or something? The greatest sin anyone can commit against themselves is to refuse to plan. When you <laughs> refuse to plan, you've accepted to fail. Sure. And when you see people changing, you say they think they are better than you. They are better than you because they make decision to take advantage of what they see. The worst, another thing you can commit against yourself is not to see what is advantageous to you. You don't recognize it. You don't take it. You understand? Mm -hmm. You think you want people to be there. You sit here, when you're 40 years old, the energy you had when you were 25 or in your 30s, you can't have it anymore. Sure. What are you going to do with it? Okay, you can run around, maybe you do drugs, maybe you do fraud, maybe you do whatever you do. At the end of the day, it will come to an end. Here, the law will catch up with you one day. Sure. And when they catch up with you, they're sentencing foreigners to 25 years, 15 years. They won't take bribes. Mm. Okay? So, why would you do that to yourself? They invited me to another church to speak. I was speaking, they said to me, I was speaking to the people, I said to them, okay, you ask people, what do you do here? He said, I'm a hustler. Mm. I said to people, before you tell your kids that you're a hustler or your friends, you must know if you're accepted to say I'm a thief or a criminal. Mm. So you may as well say to people, when they say, what do you do? Instead of saying a hustler. A hustler is a, a guy named for... Uh, Criminals who want to, you don't like you magnify it. You are a pastor, you know. You they say, What do you do? You say, I'm a pastor, I work in, at the national parliament. Now, the criminal wants to sign coy and nice. He said, Oh, I'm a hustler. There is no profession in the world called hustling, it's just a, a term criminal used to, you know, make what they do fancy for. So, when you don't like it, see the kids we are having, they go to school, the friends ask them, What you know, what does what is what kind of job does your father do? He mm. said, my, my father is a hustler. You are embarrassing that child. You are embarrassing your wife. When you don't like where you are, you get up and do something to change it. Learn a handwork. Learn, a, learn something. Learn a trade. Do something. Go out there and do something that's going to help you. You know what you're good at. If it's trading, invest in it. 
if it's maybe furnishing or something, you like education, go for it. If you don't, there must be something you can do sure. that you can be proud of. It. Yeah. You know, it's nice to hear this from a, from a different perspective. Because, you know, like South Africans, we are trying um, to be very nice sometimes to, to people from other parts of Africa. Because we also are Africans. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when I was in, in uh, Rwanda, someone says to me, oh, you're from South Africa. How is that country? And I'm like, I'm an African, you do know that. They're like, oh, okay. So they always see you differently. But, you know, I just want to find and hear your perspective of how you see and, and what you have been experiencing in South Africa. But let's go further with your book. Mm -hmm. Have you written a book and um, it's called Illusions uh, of Grandia. Of Grandia. A fiction depicting the lives of South Africans who are after easy money. Women, I hope I'm going to, because this is how I've seen it. Women who sell themselves to men with what they call green. Maybe you should lend me to summarize it before people say something else has not been. See, the book in, in, in its perspective is this, all right? It's a book that I want to show people, for example. There are mothers out there cleaning people's floors and sending their kids to school. Today is Friday. It's thank God it's Friday. Mm. Now they troop to places like in Zolis, all those places in the location. You go and see that you think it's a holiday resort. Yeah. Now the parents are there, they think their daughters and are school. Now they're going to follow men who have money. Maybe sure. big guys. They could be white, they could be black, they could be colored, they could be Indians. It's not something that is only, uh, you know, prone to a certain race or something, all right? Mm -hmm. Now you follow this old man who has a family and have kids. He's going to take you, I say in the book, there are three things he's going to give you. He gets you pregnant, unwanted pregnancy. Sure. At the end of the day, you take it and give to your go, -go who didn't ask for it. Number two, can give you diseases. Number three, if you're lucky, he marries you. Now you're living with an uncle, a man old enough to be your grandfather as your <laughs> husband. These are the things you bring to yourself. Sure. Why can't you settle down for four years or three years, get a diploma or that degree, so you get a job, you can be a B yourself. Mm. Because South Africa, is, they say it's alive with possibilities. Everybody, you can do it for you. You don't need to follow. You follow a guy with a big car, he drives you, take you out to somewhere, maybe some nice hotel, finish with you. He drops you by in your little shack or your small place where you stay. He's going sure. to his palace. And you know another thing in the book that you see? When a relationship gets spoiled between a man and a woman, maybe a husband and wife or something, you know who they believe? The other woman. But I'm saying, no, the big devil is the man. <laughs> we know, we are men. No woman can manipulate any man. We are vulnerable, we make them to do our job. And the woman will go and, you know, like uh, blame the other girl, like you come here, you seduce my husband, you do. What about that man himself? Who made himself available to be seduced? Let's say she, he's even. He was seduced, you understand? Sure. So I'm saying, when your relationship goes sour between you and your husband or your boyfriend, blame the devil in the details, the man, sure, not the other woman. The, the one thing that I, that I understand, you know, sometimes as, as women, many women that go to places like the Missouri's and stuff like that, they go there to find something that they're missing in life. And then they find someone with a bling. So they will go for the man that has the best money or the best car or everything that shines. I mean, I've been uh, in, in African countries, and when I go there, people always tell me, put on some gold mm -hmm. watches, mm -hmm. um, chains, all right, because that's how women attract, you get attracted by people. And um, you know what the problem becomes afterwards is that women start getting abused by these men. First of all, they become um, sex slaves, and um, they become um, sometimes mules to, to these men, maybe to, to mule drugs and stuff like that. And that is where the problem is. And you know, that is what we want, that I want to talk about, um, especially about women. And as a lawyer, like where you are at, you know, in South Africa, we are sitting with that big problem where women are firstly get abused by sexual abuse, they get abused by men that beat them up and hit them and stuff like that. But also, they become drug mules. And um, your books, your book, I didn't read it, all of it because it's a very thick book. <laughs> but you know, as I started, there's a lady that I, that I call, that you call Kitty. Kitty, Kitty. 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 And um, see, there's a white one, there's a black one, there's a colored one. Oh my Yeah, word. but I didn't deal with the colored one that much. But the second <laughs> book, I brought that one to life. But it's a different kind of story. So, so, so the lady Kitty is the one that we're actually going to talk about today. Okay. And um, just explain to us a little bit more about Kitty and what she's actually, where she finds herself in that story that you're telling. Okay, you look at South Africa, right? Mm. Now, you have people who've gone to school and they've got degrees to study. I mean, they study, they've got degrees, they've got jobs 9 to 5. Now, the problem is this now. They don't get satisfied with the salary that they earn. Now, because they don't get satisfied, they live a life that they want to 
I mean, please difference the category of uh, company that they keep. This is why what they do is what they look for an extra income. These people, some of them are corporate prostitutes. Uh, this, is, this is my opinion. I'm not saying I have fact anywhere, but I write fiction, you must know that. We're talking of Kitty in my book. Now, what, I'm, what I see is this now. You see, like Friday today, they are guests who are at the airport. They know when, okay, they know when, uh, they know when they, the, the guys with easy money travel, mm. obviously mostly late flight, okay? They know the category of people they can find easily. They, they make themselves sure. vulnerable or something. The man think is so lucky and smart, all right? And now, maybe one girl who, they, they can be CEOs. Some of them can be general managers in big corporations or companies or parastatals. But they're not, they don't live within their means. Every day they troop to the banks to get loans, which they can't even pay. They wear labels. They wear all of those things to please their friends, but they can't afford to pay. You go sure. to the shopping mall, you see all, you see Kitty, people like Kitty walking and talking to themselves. You say, mm -hmm. well, what is wrong with these people? They're psychologically messed up in their head. You know why? Because you take too much pressure, more than you can even handle. They don't plan with the salary they have. What they do is because you live in an apartment that you can't pay for, you drive a car you can't pay for, what they do is they have to go and look for a strike call and they make themselves available to men. Some of these men they sleep with. That's why you see so many single mothers everywhere. They won't use protection, you know, they go ahead because you just want to get money and most of these people they get involved in, in taking drugs and drinking and they, they end up doing things that normally they wouldn't do with their sober senses. But it's happening. The one you talk about drug mode like Z uh, Kitty, Kitty was uh, because of this life of trying to live extravagant and to please her friends. And her salary wasn't enough for her. She fell in love with somebody who deals on drugs. And then what the man said to her, you know, they, they went on a business trip. I'm taking you out to treat you or something. All they're doing for you, they're taking you out there to push drugs for them without you knowing. Sure. The foreign black men are doing it. The local black men are doing it. The, the local uh, foreign men, uh, white men are doing it. The foreign white men are doing it. Everybody is in the game. Everyone, I mean. It's not as if it's a particular set of people that are doing it. Sure. Some are more notorious than the others. Some make money, they hide it. Others make some money, they come out and show, and they're flashy, and then people talk about them. One thing people don't know is, and not to categorize people, the drug problems in South Africa is a big issue, we understand, and yes. it's really destroying the society. And it's because of the, the bottom line is people just want to live above their means and they want to please their peers. And as a result of that, they <coughs> take decisions that end up causing harm than appeasing or trying to give them the reward that they are looking for. At the end of the day, they end up empty. Sure, and then they become the, the victim of, of, a, a of your own. Yeah, they, the kind of the choices they make, they become sure. a victim of that. Yeah. You know, as a as a, uh, a a lawyer, I mean, you we have was talking about your book and, and Kitty, but you know, as we come into real life, and you you have been involved with all kinds of people, drug lords, abusive husbands, abusive boyfriends, women that comes to you and they, and they cry to you. I mean, I can imagine myself. Are you as a lawyer must sit and listen to to ladies and women that um, been abused? How do you deal as a lawyer with this kind of things? And what do you do to that lady um, that comes to you, basically, and, um, and ask for help? The thing is, uh, people really cry out. You know why they don't cry out? For example, you see in the book, people get involved with rich men. Now, what they do is they protect the title of the man. They say, mm -hmm. okay, the, the society is going to hate me. They will say I'm a bad person. Remember this man promised you to say, I will be there for you, no matter what, right? Sure. And now you, you get pregnant or something like that, and then this man changes and begins to treat you bad. Now, the woman will, first of all, consider the man's public stand in the society before they consider themselves. Some of them have kids. Imagine a situation where a man earns 100,000 a month. He's paying a girl 1,000 rand for maintenance, and that girl takes it. When she tried to complain to another one, you know what they say? Show me, you are too greedy. My one is giving me 500 rand. It's your problem, you are saying 500. Why are you so greedy? It gives you 1,000 and you're complaining. I'm getting 500 and I'm living with it. You understand? Sure. You shouldn't live with it. For every man who has money and you let him to get away with abusing you, you empower him to abuse another young woman out there. Sure. When you don't, but you're not a bad person. What about the promises he made to you? Why do you let him get away with it? You arm him with these extra resources which he has rightly you know, bequeathed to you by virtue of the fact that he has agreed to enter into a consensual relationship with you and now there's a product out of it. And then you let him to keep that money. He's going to use it to go for another young girl somewhere. Mm -hmm. Now, what, like when, when people come, you see, I said, uh, lawyers, 
are just lawyers, all right? So some lawyers have humanity in them, some don't have. As long as, at the end of the day, if you can pay the bills of a lawyer, he's going to represent you. Now, some might tell you, you see, some, some men will be willing to spend a uh, 100,000 and to, rep to, to defend, I mean, to wage of a woman who is trying to get a thousand rand a month from them. Now, if you calculate a hundred thousand for a thousand rand a month, you can, you may have paid maybe five years ahead or more. I'm not very good with mathematics and calculation. <laughs> I'm not an accountant or something. So, but then you ask yourself, but why, why would men do that? They, they go and they rather give the money to lawyers than to give it to the child which they've created with the woman. They, they will defend it, they, you know, I'll teach her a lesson, you understand, that kind of thing. Mostly, they abuse, I know they say, but women abuse men too, but I think we are the greatest and the highest perpetrators in the society. And you know I would get away with it, but the, the women allow us. They don't even talk about it. They have to talk about it in their own mix, when they mix with each other. Tell each other, you understand, what you're going through. It start with that. And they're government lawyers, they're legal aid. Some people, they're scared of going to lawyers because they're intimidated. I can't pay the legal fees, so I will take whatever I get. No, you, you go to court, they will appoint lawyers to you. The law society can help you. They can give you a lawyer for free. They act pro bono for you. So there's several uh, organizations out there that fight for women's rights and children's rights. But if you don't cry out, these people wouldn't know. A judge or a magistrate can be passing here and see that you're being abused. That man or woman can do anything. Sure. You must cry out and go to the relevant authorities. Walk to the police station. Tell what's happening to you. Rather end it today than they endure it a little bit, you know, hoping it will change. It's not going to change. It's just going to get worse. If you have a case or something, you have no money for a lawyer, go to the law society. They can help you. Go to court. Go and cry. Go to the police station. They'll point at the right person to go to. Sure. You know, I just want to, to um, quote something from, from um, what I just uh, researched. It says that the rate of sexual violence in South Africa is amongst the highest in the world. That's South Africa. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to go to the rest of the world. Sexual violence is the, is the use of force or manipulation to get someone to engage in unwanted sexual activity without his or her consent. Con, uh, consent. An estimate of 500,000 rapes cases take place in the country every year. And that, for me, is, is a... It's a scary, scary thought, but when we're going to come back, um, we're going to talk more about that. Um, we're going to take a break quickly and we're going to listen to a, a, a song of John the Butler that says, please don't take it. <laughs> 